We are live. Hello and welcome to a new leadership playbook. I am Keyshawn Hughes. I'm joined by the Brilliance Unveiler, Natalie Jovity, as always. And today we're going to be talking about putting a stop to perfectionism, performing, and people pleasing. It's something that I'm sure everyone who's going to be tuning into is familiar with in some form or fashion. If it's not you, it's somebody else that you've observed mm -hmm. with these behaviors. It's me it, and it was me and it's still something I'm recovering from. So, yes, <laughs> so we're going to share today. And but before we do, Natalie, would you like to introduce yourself and say more? Sure. About Thanks, Sean. So hi, everyone. My name is Natalie Joviti with my accent from Trinidad, which I never mentioned. Um, I am the Brilliance Unveiler. My company is called The Unveiled Way. And it's, um, I'm going to leave with that this time, where The Unveiled Way, it's becoming clear to me. It's my one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's my workshop facilitation, my Women's Catalyst Circle events that I ha have locally every, every um, couple of months. It's my empowerment products, my books. It's your time to shine, girl, from Be the Fabulous. And now I have affirmation card decks called She Shines. Um, it, it's, it's a whole suite of things. And the heart of it is about two, two of my words, impact and empowerment for women in their leadership arena. Um, and it's just, I'm, it's just becoming clear to me. So my company is called Unveil Way. That was not my logical brain making up that title. It's a whole story behind that. But now it's making all set. It's all the sense. Um, yeah. Why it's called that, and the coaching is just one aspect of it. Um, which I, and I love that aspect of it, but it's really a lot of other things as well yes. that are coming, coming clear to me what I'm supposed to be doing in my purpose. So yeah, I'm just um, just like that. The whole idea of, of empowering women to bring their best brilliance to their arenas in a way that makes them their most authentic evolved version of themselves and make the greatest impact is my why. And so this topic Kishan and I are talking about today is kind of kind of like the backstory of how we we operate when we are not in that version to make our greatest impact. And so we hope this talk today will help you all to see why it might be important to start to shift your narratives and mindset to, to stop these behaviors because they actually hinder your success and your impact on your joy. Ooh. Shift and shed. <laughs> that came up in a previous conversation when yes. I heard you shift. My mind went to shed as well. Yes, we hope to give you some practices and some just practical advice and well-lived advice <laughs> that's coming yes. from a place of experience today on this topic. I'm Keyshawn Hughes. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a listener. I'm very sensitive and I just mm. enjoy, I enjoy life and living an abundant life. Mm. So important to me. My purpose is important to me. And as Natalie shared, a purpose walk unveils itself over time. A purpose walk is a faith walk. Yeah. On today. Also, my company name, NeuroSavvy Leadership, was given to me as I've been walking on my purpose. It didn't start off like that. I started off as Hughes Coaching and Consulting, just naming it something practical and, and as what it was. And so as time has unfolded, it's been revealed to me as well that I'm here to help people become more inclusive leaders as mm. individuals and collectively in the workforce. And so my work happens through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through consultative work at corporations, um, and also through speaking engagements and facilitation workshops. And so I love what I do every day. It's like opening a gift to be able to engage in this way to talk yeah. about topics that I truly am passionate about that mean a lot to me as an individual, as, mm -hmm. as a leader who's walking this walk, who's hoping to become more evolved in the way that I am with myself and others. And so I yeah. think that's a great entry into what we're going to be talking today, that we're, the recovery and the experience of um, understanding perfectionism, people pleasing, the whys of it all, and mm -hmm. how to do things differently, do things in a more healthy, happy, wholesome way. That yeah. uh, Natalie, I want before I dive into, you introduced me to the win-win-win concept, and that's what came to my mind as I was thinking about this topic. I want to win for me, a win for the people I'm engaging with, and then the impact is a win for all. Right? Mm -hmm. We all win. Same win. We all win. We all win. Mm -hmm. Right? So yes, that's where I'm I'm coming from today during this discussion. That's yes, I'm yes, and we all win as a mindset that when you can really embody that, you become less concerned about what people think or what like you're all about the the us, the we, mm. and so the me becomes 
not that important quite honestly yes. <laughs> more about the okay, it's made up now more about the weed than the meat that's a whole new thing oh, i like that that's really good well that might be another topic for us <laughs> <laughs> and that hits on to something i heard recently just thinking about wellness and illness there's mm -hmm. an i in Ill illness so when we mm -hmm. think about the word itself it's a lot of times it's a focus or an, a toxic focus on the eye of it all whereas wellness includes we Yes, operating from a space of wellness in this conversation as we think about the we all win concept and and more. So I, I also wanted to share that little tidbit I just heard yesterday. I think it's, it's it it left a plant of the seed, and I want to I share love it. So yeah. I'm going to start up um, asking Kishon a question about yes. her journey <laughs> from being and I and I'm a recovering one and all those things. So I have my own journey. Yes, yes. Kishon today and use her example of how she re booted mm. from mm. being a performing perfectionistic people pleasing persona person. Wow. Thank you for that question. It's such a big question. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am a reflective person about myself. I would say that's, that's something that I've come into being with very um, intentionally over the last few years. Mm. I, I can look back in the calendar of my life. Like there are certain milestone moments where I can chart, oh, that mm -hmm. was amazing. That was an evolutionary experience. That I was different. There was a BC and an AD experience. Mm -hmm. to that. And so I think a big part, one that I'll touch on today that comes to mind immediately is becoming a mom, the birth of my mom. Mm -hmm. and how, oh, the birth of my mom, the birth of me. <laughs> <as a mom. laughs> I do, I do self-parent. You know, I think that's a part of it. Just being able to reparent and self-parent through our parenthood journey is so important. But um, yes, when I became a mom, that was a wake-up call for me because I think for me, once again, when I chart the course of my leadership journey, sometimes I've hit a new level of insight and intuition yep. and and ways of moving in the world after a traumatic experience. Yes, my birth experience was traumatic. We we know about the stats with black maternal health. And I could have been a statistic had I not mm -hmm. advocated for myself in those moments during that birthing experience for myself. It was like a new awakening. And it came from me wanting to be here. <laughs> I want to be here for my daughter. I don't want to just, you know, have her here without me being here. And so it's just, it, I think it tapped into some type of warrior DNA strand that I have that has been sustaining me for the last seven years as her as her mother. Um, but I think that's what just it really sh just turned on a light for me becoming a mother. I, I recognize that I need to be well. Mm -hmm. I need to model healthy, happy womanhood because it's not so much about what we say as it is about what we do. Who we be, who we be. Yes. Yes. How we are how we engage. The words are something, but the tone of it all, the mm -hmm. interaction, the engagement, um, all of that matters. All of that's important. And so I feel like that's just one area of life. When I came into, I was different the day before, and now I'm different for all the days after, that really took me out of wanting to make things perfect. I just want to be here. I want to, I want to be here. I want to be here and I want to be here in an abundant, healthy, wholesome, well way. So what were the first steps you took to let mm. go and shed some of those behaviors, Kashan? Yes. Mm, the first steps. I think just mm, tapping into myself. I think that was an experience where I truly had to advocate for myself mm. and what I was feeling in my body. There's the external, right, of what I should be feeling or how I should be in this experience, how I've been trained to be. We, we took birthing classes, right? So I know I'm supposed to breathe now. I know I possibly need to ask for this now or it's going to be given to me, right? So just talking about that, that journey, just becoming a mom, I, I just feel like there were things happening internally that did not chart to what the plan was, right? Mm -hmm. So the perfectionist in me, the person who was in me, who once was silent, who once would have just mm. taken external advice and just gone with what others say, other yeah. experts. Say, the, people ple the people pleasing, the, the not the wanting people. to make any waves, create yeah, any friction that, person. Right, right. Um, that, and a lot of women still do that. I feel like it's, it's something I think about when I think about societal pressures, um, the conditioning, the ways in which we're raised to survive, 
but I, I didn't want to just survive. I don't want to just survive today. I want to, like I said, be here and be of a sound mind. I want to be want to thrive. We want to thrive. I want to thrive. I want to thrive. So I think, yes, just having to advocate for myself and say things that I knew wouldn't sound, say things in imperfect ways, um, probably stutter as I'm saying it, say things that would be questioned. And I don't necessarily know how I'm going to respond to the questions, but just using my voice. I think that was one thing, using my voice in a way that I hadn't been trained to do. Using yeah. my voice in a way that was coming from an internal urgency as mm -hmm. opposed to a trained, learned way of using my voice. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so a couple of things on that point. So to break free from these patterns, yes. unlearning is required. Absolutely. So you just said how we will, how you learn. We yes. all were conditioned, learn to be certain yes. things that from whether it's modeled from our parents, our teachers, yes. depending on wh how, where we are in the cycle of life and mm -hmm. how we evolve up the people around us were, we're conditioned to be certain things until we realize we have to unlearn the things yeah. that no longer serve us. That's right. And then, the, and then the other thing is part of what you shared. And I think part of the heart of what we're going to talk about, we are talking about today is mm -hmm. to break free from these patterns requires a huge dose of courage to be vulnerable. Absolutely. To be vulnerable because when you have to shift and say, I'm going to use my, speak my truth, mm -hmm. not knowing how it would land, no. guess what that is? That's courage and vulnerability to be like, I just know what I know right now, and I don't know right. if you're going to like it, but I'm going to see it. The people yes. pleaser would have uh i don't know okay i can't say that because it's not quote unquote normal or yes. common or whatever so i'm going to keep quiet and Kisho what is mm. sharing here is the foundational truth of to break free from all what i call the the the, the cheap three gremlins yes performing, pleasing perfecting mm -hmm. requires courage and vulnerability about who we are and who we be and knowing that and trusting that we are enough so yeah. back to like that whole like foundation and self-belief, we are enough. We can trust our, our feelings. We can trust our, our motivations and our, our intuition. We can trust that we will be heard. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that Kishan and I were just talking about this earlier, um, I just launched this um, product and affirmation card that called She Shines. Yeah. And one of the things that as you were talking, I thought about the one that says, I'm not, a, I'm not an echo. I'm a voice, not an echo. Wow. I'm a voice, not an echo. To wow. have a voice, oh my gosh, to speak the truth yes. and not to just be saying what is being said around you. That is so, I, I haven't gotten to that one yet. I'm going <laughs> to plaster that on my wall. I'm not an echo. I don't want to be a, per, a, so person, a person who is perpetuating what's in the echo chamber. And yeah. the echo chamber can be what I hear every day in my house. The narratives, the, 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 the here on the news. Yes. No, I have a new insight. I'm one of one. Yeah. You're one of one. It's truly a journey to an acceptance of my worth and value as a human being. There is no one else on this earth like me, like you, will ever be. We have one opportunity to be who we were born to be. That's it. And everyone was born with a purpose. Yeah. And so really just understanding that as my foundation and awakening to it, however you awaken to it. I was awakened to it through childbirth. Another person can awaken to it. A lot of times people awaken to it through wounding, through some type of traumatic experience, some type of difficulty. Some type of, type of challenge that they have to go through because Absolutely. the only way they can see it is to go through that challenge and be like, right. I can't operate the way I was because this ain't working. Exactly. That was, that was more my journey. Oh, yeah. please share more. Please share oh, more. No, I, we don't have time. I, oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I would love to. Okay. Well, we're, I, I mean, this topic of perfectionism and people pleasing, I feel like is a timeless topic. It's, we can we can have we can slice it and dice it in so many different ways, particularly as women. And I'll say for me as a black woman in the way that I was raised in the household that I was raised in and the family and not to discount the way I was raised. I love my I love the family I came from. I love my lineage. However, for me today in 2023 on this day and, and going forward, there are so many things I do differently and will teach others differently through these platforms, through my own personal one-on-one -on -one experiences within my family, my friendship groups, because I'm here to do things differently. I was born for a purpose and my purpose is different from anyone else's. So is well, your, I'm thinking of who you're going to teach back, back to your story. What yes. you're going to teach, which will make the huge impact is your daughter. Impact. You're going to teach your daughter to be a whole different kind of version of a young girl who will grow into yes. a young adult because 
you're now training her in different oh, ways in which you would train. Yes, thank you for that. I love that. Thank you. It's validation in moments like that. I'm like, oh, yes, that's like, that was a light bulb. I'm like, you're right. That, yes. that was Eureka. <laughs> and that's what comes to when I have Eureka moments. Those didn't happen when I was being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. There was no Eureka moments. There was a sense of satisfaction from finishing and completing jobs. Um, that can come from that that dopamine high, right? The, of the performing. Of the performing of meeting a need. However, it never fully connected me to my source, which my source is God. It never fully connected me to the people I was trying to please. That is what kept the, the engine running and going. Yes. Um, and I was never connected to myself as I was doing that. I was so detached, so detached and externally focused. So that's... Yes, I feel like that, like that, that is another point we need to just savor for a minute because when we are engaging in this behavior, we are so disconnected from ourselves and focused on the others. Focus on the other. So the pleasing, the performing, perfection yes. is all about outward focus things and other people. Yes. We don't even know what we truly want. We just want right. to cater to their whims, their fancies, their preferences, leaving, abandoning ourselves mm. in the process. We're abandoning ourselves in the process. So when we come to a place where we realize I am not about, I'm the only one who could be here for me. Like yes. I'm the only okay. one who can stand, stand firmly and, and anchored in my truth for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one who can do it. So yes. that's the opposite of abandoning oneself, right? I'm going to, I'm my warrior. I'm my inner warrior for me. Yes. I'm going to fight, self-advocate, speak for me yeah. i'm the only one who can when we come to that reckoning that's when everything starts to change because so uh, back to performing pleasing perfecting is all about trying to get attention validation from others versus knowing and trusting and believing that we have it already in ourselves born with it born with it and then and then another big point here is and i want to everybody who's listening for everybody who's live or listening to the replay yeah. Ask yourself this question, wherever you are on your journey, uh, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Am I getting what I truly want? Mm -hmm. Because your response to that question will give you a clue of whether you are engaging in a lot of the peace, performing, perfecting, for people pleasing, or if you are truly being aligned and guided by your purpose, your mission, your values, your goals, your aspirations, your divine destiny. Right. So they're two different, almost two different opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. If you are feeling happy and fulfilled in your work, in your life, chances are you're on the right track. Mm. If you're not feeling that way, you have to ask yourself, what price? Um, another question. Mm -hmm. What price am I paying keeping this up? Oh, oh, the keeping opportunity. This, quote, unquote, yes. Charade, yes. It's a charade, right? Yes. You're not really being true to your authentic self. So what price am I paying or what cost am I enduring for keeping this up? The high achieving, performing, pleasing, perfecting. What is it getting me? And, and, and worse, what price am I paying? Yes, I, I'm thinking of investments, deposits and uh, withdrawals. Right. That's what I'm thinking as you're talking about cost. That's where my mind is going. I began to see that in my own life where I was making a lot of deposits into everyone else, mm -hmm. everything else. And I had nothing to withdraw for myself. Oh, that's good, Kashawn. So it's it's so important. And I don't want to just deposit money that's going to instantly go to pay a bill, right? Go, go to right. that's, check that's, off a daily that's a reactive. Yes. Reactive. Response. I want investments. I want property. I want sustainability. I want, I want my money and the, the money that I'm investing in myself. If I'm thinking about it in money terms, to grow on its own over time. Self, right, right. The ripple effect. Yes, exponentially. That we just did a whole thing, right? That is a whole thing, right? Isn't there. it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's about looking yes. at. Is it, isn't it called the? Um, oh gosh, isn't it called the? Uh, I'm gonna remember the term right now. Mansplaining, we're mansplaining what we yes. do. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, math. We're using yes. math, but literally, that what you just said is so perfect. Withdrawal mm -hmm. versus invest versus deposit. Yes, Woo! yes, that is the what for me, perfectionism, people pleasing, and performing was in, in, a, in a nutshell. 
It was making lots of deposits into everything and everyone else and not having anything to withdraw for myself. That's what it was. And I want to, and I now do, once I met, once that became clear to me, it became clear to me through therapy, it became clear to me through journaling, through self-reflection, yeah. through radical rest. That's something I feel like I learned how to snatch rest. I learned to prioritize and value rest in a way that through my neuroscience training, through other types of work that I've done, through reading I've done, the NAP ministry, I've been following the NAP ministry for yeah, years. Yeah, for and sure. Rest, yes, yes. And it's, it's, it's revolutionary it to... Is to rest and not in a way that that helps to is consumer it's about lazy and not being yeah yeah or or that's consumerism focused like i have to take a vacation to rest i have to go somewhere far away and be on a far a, a beautiful resort to rest no i'm gonna rest right here at home in my mm -hmm. community in my neighborhood and i'm gonna find ways to do that to do that even if it's just me closing my eyes for three minutes in between calls yeah, I, I am. I am valuable enough to do that. I am worthy enough to do that. And not only as, as I'm doing it, it's refueling my cup. It's making those investments, not just deposits, but investments in my personal well-being, mm -hmm. my personal health so that I can give for my overflow. I give from an overflow now. I, I, am, I am missing nothing. That's how I know, too, that I don't operate in a way that's performative, that's focused on pleasing others or that's perfectionistic. Mm -hmm. It's like what I give, I give to what I give to others. I always give to myself as a, as a routine way of life, as as a ritual um, for myself. I I'm only perpetuating what I already give to myself as I give to sure. others. You know what I'm saying? As we're having this conversation, I've had this conversation with myself. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not doing anything new here. I'm just kind of revising yeah. it, expanding it, doing it with you and informed with others so that we just together all win. Okay, so I want to just pause for a minute because we have two comments from oh. Sabrina. Yes, um, who's validating you and she's also uh, uh, echoing the truth that rest is important for our yeah. mental and uh, well-being health and, and well-being so I want to go back quickly because I know time is coming but like yes. so the idea of you mentioning rest yeah so as, as you call it a radical what do you call it it's radical rad it felt radical for me radical yeah. rest for you me it, you said you snatched you said you snatched yes so when you said that what came to my using the word snatch is so yes important. but what it came what came to my mind is things like rest mm. things like I'm going to speak my truth even though if nobody believes yes. things like I'm going to do this a whole different way that haven't hasn't been done before mm -hmm. you know what those are those what? are breaking the conditioning yes. of capitalistic society pretty much that we've all been yes. brought yes. in and so oh, that's what she said, she's whole knack when she's about but i'm really yes. seeing for myself too how oh my gosh all the ways of being like i have to have a phd to be yes. smart or right. you know, all the things we, we all learn and believe to be true mm -hmm. now we get to say Right. Do I really believe and, and buy into that anymore? And if I don't, what do I truly believe? Mm. What I like? So what what am I standing for in my life right now? Am I standing for hustle culture? Mm. Or am I standing for like I'm gonna I'm gonna make my work life in a way that I get to have fun? Like we get to decide and choose the playground of life we want to be in. I'm I'm like I want to make money. Of course, that's important, but that's never been my driver. My yeah. driver is, well, am, I making, am I making my impact? Yeah. And, and am I also having fun along the way? Now, I got to do more work on the having fun along the way part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I keep going like, I am so passionate about impact. Mm. The money, I and of course, again, we all need money to thrive yes. and survive. No, survive and thrive. Yes. But I believe, I should say, but <laughs> and I believe that the more I focus on my impact, that income will just like ooh, flow right. from, back to say, from the overflowing of my passion and my, my purpose. Because at the end of the day, when we are aligned with who we are and who we are designed to be, I believe that we are open to the best that our lives are meant to, to, to give to us. Absolutely. You know, like everything, everything that we are longing for is actually right here. Ooh, mm -hmm. We are the ones That's who right. have to be unveiled. Mm. to see and receive what's actually already out there for us. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when we are operating from default modes of being, including performing, pleasing, and perfecting, 
those things are shielded from our sight, our physical and our spiritual. Like scales on the eyes. Oh my God. That is mm, taking the scales off of our eyes. Yes. That's, that's, that's what was coming to me as you said that. Wow. That's cool. what unveiling is literally is yes. about. It's like for, me, for us to us, we wow. to see the truth for our own personal truth. truth and the truth around us and the capital T truth for what it really is. And so only when we can truly see with our purest eyes and sight, mm -hmm. then we can access what's available. What and and I you know what's amazing, which is I'm seeing in my own life, yeah. what's available is so abundant and vast, yes. we can't even begin to fathom it. And if we stay in this, and honestly, when you're performing, pleasing, perfecting, yes. you're staying in a very small little silo, yeah, it's so, limited. Being, so limited, Ooh. you can't even, you can't even sneeze at what. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like building a um a house with a, a deck of cards. It could all crumble at any moment. And oh it, my God. It, the, the foundation the yes. is on sand. And yes. when we start to build up that foundation on rock, whatever Ooh. cannot be crumbled or broken or, or just like that when it's in our truth in our being in our, our, our authenticity in our vulnerability in our self-awareness in our self-love in our love for others it, it is so many aspects of all of this yeah. when we stand solidly solid, solidly on that rock then again back to our eyes can see things our being can know things that are out here already that before we couldn't because we couldn't we were in our silo yeah. our silo we, a siloed mode of is this making sense? Operating. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. We're going to wrap this up really quickly. Um, we want to do 30 minutes a day. Uh, and yeah. We'll give you ways to continue this conversation to keep it going with us. But something that you said, you've never been driven by money. I was. So I directly tied the perfectionism, people mm -hmm. think, performing, which is exhausting. Mm -hmm. to, I just wanted to make money. I wanted to make a lot of money. And I knew exactly how to do it. I had mm -hmm. learned how to do it. But I did not have that internal fulfillment. Someone I heard say again, I was listening to the radio and they said, well, you can't be a light if you can't pay the light bill. Right. Right. So that that to aligns. With, yes, we want to make money. Of course. We have to find that balance. We can't be driven by the external. We can't be driven by our bills. They are there. We want to acknowledge the reality of that. However, there is another reality that we can tap into. Exactly. Natalie is saying when we are truth tellers. Right. That's something you've said several times in this conversation. We tell our truth. We tell the truth. Nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. We are not afraid or maybe we might be a little afraid of how it comes out, how it's received. But when we stand on truth, we keep going. We do that a little bit at a time. Yeah. One day after the next. Yeah. So I, one I, step I, at a time. Yeah. Yes, because it can be a big, massive goal. Like I said, you can take it in little bitty bites to recover, to rewire your mind from this way of being. But when you do, there's so much abundance. There's so much to be to be experienced through you and for yeah. you. Yeah. When you can change this way of operating. This is how we were born to operate in a way that was is trusting, that's open, that's truth telling, that's healthy, that's well, that's um that's so self -aware. Self -aware. yeah, yes, Self-aware, yes, authentic, all the things. Yes. You know, I know and it's the time. Um I'll just give one quick tidbit yes. and let's just talk about let's give a little little uh teaser Kashana what you and I yes. planning. But like um you know, we, we talked about boundaries in a whole, a whole other yeah, podcast yeah. episode, but you know, a small step can be, be learning how to say no yes. and feeling comfortable with that. Like, so when you're performing, so and perfecting, you don't have good boundaries and you don't know how to right. say no at all. So you if you just, like maybe the first step you can take is I can actually say no to this yeah. request or, and just lean into that, that, that would be something that would open you up to a whole new experience. It will. It's so good. Starting with those little tiny opportunities to say no. Find tiny, them. Tiny quiet. What you're doing is you're building up the neural pathways in your mind, which are the foundations for your habits. So you can learn new healthy habits that are counter to perfectionism and completely aligned with wholeness. All the things that we're talking about, this joyful, exuberant, fueling way of existing that never runs out. It's like an ever running spring. You always have new 
wisdom to share new energy mm -hmm. for yourself and others. It is, is a winning proposition to move out of the way of being when it comes to people pleasing, performing and perfectionism. So we want to continue this conversation. We have some resources for you. We want to connect with you in new ways. Natalie and I are developing something very exciting. And I'd love for Natalie to share more. <laughs> as I, I know we have, oh, OK, so all, all, I, all we will say right now, it's yes. going to be we're, th we're launching it probably likely in January, a group yes. program. And it's going to be called the Savvy Sisterhood Circle. Ah! So, so just, that's what we're gonna just do teaser yes, right now. Savvy Sisterhood Circle will be launching in January. Stay tuned for yes, us to share more about that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I put the link to a quiz that Natalie put together about developing your leadership or identifying what your leadership brand is. Please follow that for more information. And that's a way that you can stay in touch with us to continue these conversations for yourself one-on-one. -on -one. That's the way change happened for me. I had one-on-one -on -one specific support for my unique needs to help me support. then to be able to, yes, share. Support is another small step, but we don't have to, I know, so that's yes. success <laughs> to run yourself with the right people, the right that's support right. Is, the, is another easy for, well, easy first yes. step yes it is to start to break these patterns of behavior but like sean we can go and talk for two hours <laughs> or 100 <laughs> hours because um, that's what we do <laughs> we're gonna put a pause on this yeah. episode and we look forward to see you guys later at another time for another amazing yeah, right. authentic real yeah. talk real about real. a topic that we know we as women as leaders as people struggle with until thank next you. time Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Bye. <laughs>